Okay, so today we uh, continue with our Kisser class. Kisser Shochanor, so today class number 20, and we start with Sefer Hafiz Chaim, and the uh, big topic is the same, uh, Loshan Hara, Laws of Derogatory Speech, and today's topic is uh, Repentance. We're on page 82. Mm -hmm. So you want to read? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Repentance. We have seen that to speak derogatorily of one's fellow is to degrade one's own status as a creation in God's image. For one who speaks Lashon Hara, the Chuba process and is the same for all, uh, as for all sins between man and his creator. Confession, sincere regret, and the re resolution never to speak Lashon Hara again. One is not required to discuss the matter with the subject of one's sinful world, the words, and seek his forgiveness. Unless actual harm is caused. Okay, there is a teshuva for having caused harm uh, through a Losh and Hara is to be discussed later. So basically, so what we learn from here? So, so teshuva process is the same as for all of the other uh, sins between men and men. So first, a uh, person has to confess and acknowledge that he did something wrong. That's step one. Uh, so then he said uh, he have to say that I did something wrong. Not, I, so confession, he has to acknowledge what he did. Then uh, he has to say that I did something wrong. And then third uh, step is uh, res resolution never to, to do it again. Same as Loshan Haraz. The only difference between uh, uh, sins between men and men. So they have to do some restitution. For example, if guy uh, lost a lot of money, he lost whole, whole business or whatever because of this... Uh, stupid comment, right, uh, on, uh, on the product page, so it's just simple, I'm sorry, it's not going to work. In a sense, a person has to fix it as much as he can. <coughs> All right, so let's stop here. So we continue Shkitor Shulchan Norah, and uh, we continue with loads of tzitzes. <coughs> sorry, it's a little detail, but uh, it's uh, that's what we need to cover. So it's, uh, as, as we said before, Kitsur is a uh, is a shorter version of the of the actual Shulchan Aruch. Okay, so it's very minimal. So we we we'll, uh, we'll left off like in the middle of the <clears throat> Sif number thirteen. So I'm going to start from the beginning, but without commentary, we just uh, uh, briefly like uh, read. So we have continuation. Then it says number thirteen, when the tzitzis tassel is a tassel is affixed to the garment, it must be total of twelve uh, thumb thumb breaths. In the lens, okay. The sieve discuss this uh, sieve discuss halachas that apply when some of the tzitzit strings were severed after they had been affixed uh, properly. Okay, so they affixed properly, so uh, and then severed. Okay, uh, tzitzit tassel of one of the four uh, tzitzit affixed uh, to, to each corner of the garment was severed. They are doubled to produce a total of eight strings. Okay, so basically, okay, so it's um, there, there are four, but then the double, so that's how we got number eight. Okay, and there remained, um, so it's four from one side, from from another side, I mean, from uh, from the knot, the final knot, four from one side, from from another knot, <coughs> side of the knot, and uh, there remained after it was severed enough string to make a ball. And we said, well, what is a bore? So bore is, uh, we said, uh, there is one uh, more linear opinion. Uh, it, uh, no, it, I am saying it was more stringent opinion. was 3.2 to 3.8 inches, so which is a lot. And more, more second opinion was 1.6 inches. So it's like right, 1.6 to 1.9. So basically like a very tiny string. Like if it still remains, so so uh, people, uh, so rabbis say that you can still use it. Or if two strings are severed, but each is more th than had four thumb the breath is remain. Okay, so if in one severed or two severed, okay, and um, the other two strings were complete, the length being proper measured, twelve thumbnails breaths, right? Uh, the tzitzis, uh, the tzitzis above. So if only two severed, right, and then uh, they have this minimum requirement, but two are good, so no problem. 
How about if three or four uh, were severed? When uh, even if there uh, if there remain of each of those three strings, four uh, thumb thumb breathed lens, right? So even uh, so, if four were severed and even uh, no three three were severed and even they three have like minimum like requirement length, and the fourth string uh, is complete, or if only one string was severed. But there is not, uh, but did not remain of it at least the length of four thumb breasts. Even though the other three string complete, the tzitzis must uh, nevertheless be uh, treated as invalid. So if three are severed, like uh, mi minimum requirement, or even one severed, but uh, it's less, le less than minimum requirement, so it's not good. Okay, invalid, except in the present situation. For example, if there is no other tzitzis available. Okay. So, all right. So, that's uh, what we said so far. <clears throat> okay. New material, semkhala. Therefore, if one of the, of the strings were severed, uh, of the eight shorter strings hanging from tzitzis tassel, even if it was completely severed until the braided portion of the tzitzis tassel, uh, that um, contain the links. So meaning that if, if one was uh, one was severed and up until the knot, that's what it is. It is clearly still valid, tzitzis, tassel, because this string is actually only half of the one string. There is the, um, interesting. the, there is the half of one of four long strings inserted in the corner of the garment. So ba basically they... Uh, as we said, they, they put four and then bend it like together and bend it and it, it's going to be eight, right? Now we got eight. So they say even if one is uh, severed, so it's still one uh, like from that it comes from another side of the corner, then it's still complete. I mean, uh, so it's more than, uh, so I mean, length in general is enough. Yeah. And there is still a second half, as we just said, of the same th string which is another of eight shorter strings in a tassel, tassel. Uh, enough to make a bow, and even more than that, since uh, that side is not been severed, so I mean, it's, uh, let's say it's complete, so it's more than one bow, right? And each shorter string starts, um, starts out um, eight thumb breasts long, see above, okay. So basically, I mean, it's all technical details, but uh, they say even if one is severed up, up until not, but it is uh, still a continuation of it's still good, so they say uh, un in present situation, so they can still keep it, okay? If two strings of the eight are severed, two strings of eight are severed, uh, meaning they, I, I didn't say completely, right? And neither of two had four thumb dresses remain, Okay. If the tzitzel's tassel was made of such a way that there is a reason to be concerned that perhaps the two strings are actually two ends of the same same long string, mm -hmm. then the tzitzel's tassel is involved. So basically, if uh, if we know for sure there is a same string that severs from two sides, so uh, of course it's not good. But I'm I'm not sure how can you tell uh, since they're white. So I mean. I don't know, I'm not sure how can you tell. Since, uh, but, but they say, if you know for sure, right? Since there, are, uh, there may be one string that does not have any length of, uh, or fringe remained. Okay, commentary. Uh, this situation arises when, uh, when in the making of the braided portion of the tassel, care was not taken to keep the fringes uh, in one side of the knot. Okay, separate from those um, on one side and the other. Uh -huh. I'm not sure how, why would they do that, but I have to say it's not uh, careful. So, so basically, even though they, they, they're supposed to be like uh, four you know, on one side, four on another side of this uh, knot, but somehow they say that uh, they didn't do it carefully, so it's, it could be like uh, from the same side to, to, to strings could be from, uh, it's actually the one, one and the same. Okay, possible, I guess. I mean, uh, 
just 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 looking at this the, the, the nuts it's it's impossible to say the way I understand okay so it said the two ends of the same side of the nut were severed right so two right in that case the two short strings were severed as shortly from uh, two separate long strings so if they did care they did it uh, everything carefully so four on one side four on another side and they actually continuation of each other so even if two on one side were severed so it's like uh, two separate strings they said there is no problem Okay, so it's not two sides of one, it's two, two ends of different one. And since in this case, each one string uh, still has uh, even more than minimum amount, so from one side, of course, of four uh, thumb dresses uh, on the second side of the knot, and the other two long strings are complete, the tzitzit starts to remain one. So basically, if, we, if it's length enough, so basically he can... The way I understand, he can uh, uh, retie them, and it would be enough, like minimum requirement of both sides of these uh, severed cities. That's the way I understand. That's uh, okay. So let's continue. Even if one string was severed at the part of the string that is between the hole, the hole of the corner of the garment, and the first knot. The tzitzis tassel as well, very interesting. So now we're talking about uh, the upper part when uh, when this tzitzis tied to the to the to the garment. So even if one of them was severed, they say they they say no problem. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the sieve ends uh, with the one qualification regarding these halachas. Regarding that which uh, we uh, we said that if one strings were severed and it had the sufficient length to make a bow. Uh, still remaining, it is still wild. So that's uh, like bottom line, right? So even on one side, uh, there is enough side to make it go, so it's wild. This applies only if the time, if at the time that the tzitzit tassel was made, when they were actually affixed to the corner of the garment, all the tzitzit strings were a required measurement, 12 thumbnail breasts long. Okay. And only afterwards, so basically in the beginning, initially when they tied them to the garment, they were good. So, and only like after the fact, something happened. And only afterwards uh, were some of them severed. However, if that, um, however, if at, if at that time that the tzitzis was made, there was, there was even one string that was even slightly shorter than the required measure, the tzitzis tassel is involved. So basically if it was made correctly and then something happens so we can find some room for leniency. But if it was tied correct, uh, incorrectly, um, I mean, it was like non, not long enough length in a, a, when, when they were tied it, so it's not well, okay. Even after the fact. Okay, so number 14, next one, Kalaha. Uh, the string of the tzitzis must be made of um, in uh, interwined threads. So it's not one thread, but interwined. There is each string must made of single strand. There is double, uh, double and twisted to make single string. So, mm -hmm, okay. If any string um, unravel from the twisted state, then the halacha consider any unraveled portion as if it had been severed and no longer part of the string. Very interesting. So, so you know, like uh, these things, uh, like un unravel. So they say if it's unravel, so it, they consider it like they severed. So, but, but you can always like, uh, like uh, twist them again. And uh, some people would do what they do. They uh, they burn with a match a little, right? So like uh, it, it will stay at the same. Or some people like apply glue, some kind of glue, whatever they do. So it's all all good. So number. 90 country the above halach applies to the threads that were double and twisted only once okay and therefore when the uh, when the twisted part unraveled in a in a single ply in a single ply so basically if it's only double but in ours it's it's more than double i don't know how many threads in there maybe eight i'm not sure like many 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 
if the um, if uh, the threads that were twisted four or eight times, uh, that, that's what I think, what we have. Um, I'm sorry, sorry. Even I would say it's, it's common for the strings to consist of threads that were uh, twisted four or eight times. Okay, exactly. Therefore, even if one of the strings unraveled into two, it would not be considered as cut off. But that's... Uh, that's a good story. Since each of these things themselves have made a twisted threads. So basically, in our case, it's, uh, I think it's eight or even more threads. I'm not sure how many, but minimum eight. So thick, so for sure more. Okay, so basically, if they unravel a little, so to two parts, there is no problem. Okay, so see if number 15. I apologize, it's a little technical, but uh, that's what we have to cover. Okay. This CF teaches the application of the rule of, as it applies to a talus garment that was split in two. So talus was split in two. Very interesting. <clears throat> a talus that had the tzitzis already affixed to it and was divided into two pieces. I'm not sure how. Okay, let's see. As it's common, uh, commonly done with many of talus garments which are made of two attached pieces of cloth and occasionally they're taken apart to clean or to fix the towels and then after it is fixed or cleaned the pieces are reconnected by sewing so basically i think that they would atta attach it here on the, on the shoulder well, like two two pieces Okay, I'm not sure why we need to, to, to separate them, to, to clean this, I'm not sure. The halal, I mean, that, but that, that, that's what it is. I don't think it's applied to our talisman, but uh, continue. The halakha in such a case as follows. Since usually, the part, uh, each part is large enough to wrap oneself in, wrap oneself in, and um, as such, is still obligated tzitzis. Therefore, it is sufficient that uh, uh, if one remove uh, two tzitzis from uh, whichever part that he wishes to, and after the towel is put back together, he should uh, retie the tzitzis uh, that were removed. Since the worst parts of the garment remained, uh, remained garments, part of the garment remained garments, that obligated tzitzis, there is no need to remove all uh, tzitzis tassels before reconnecting the two pieces. Okay, so we're going to read commentary and see. So basically, somehow, I'm not sure why. So they would, uh, I think, uh, I, don't, I don't think we were talking about here for, about uh, small towels. The small towels, wherever you put like under the short or on the on top of the short. I think uh, that's, that's not enough uh, to, to, to wrap one here, oneself. Like they, they could be small, too small. Like if you divide them two, too small. So probably they're talking about the big towels now that, uh, that they use for praying. Commentary. However, both uh, tzitzis uh, tassels must be removed from uh, at least one of the parts of the towel. So basically somehow they won't disconnect two parts for cleaning, for fixing, for whatever reason. So they have to remove two, two tzitzis. Right, and they tie them together. They, they, they tie them uh, back when uh, when they sew uh, the towels. May make it like a new garment again. So one more time. However, both uh, tzitzis uh, tassels must be removed from at least one of the part of the towels because uh, uh, to, sim to simply reconnect the two pieces, each one uh, with two tzitzis would violate the principles of... Uh, so you meaning uh, you, you have to tie them, right? The remedy for this, um, the remedy for this, the two tzitzis of one piece must be removed and then tied back after the talus has been reconnected. In this way, we say that the portion, that the part upon which the tzitzis remain, was the main part of the talus. So we made the main part of the towels remain and we just add another one and the other part was addition to the towels so we can always add to the towels there is no problem okay so now and we added new part and on this new part so we tie new cities okay even old city there is no problem um, this avoid the problem of uh, 
uh, so may mean that, that you have to um, tie the tzitzis to the talus after after it's after the after the the garment completed so then only then you can tie the tzitzis see mishnah brura okay so mishnah brura disputes this and writes that although it is ideal to remove the tzitzis from one side as above uh, it is not strictly necessary since according to most authorities this case is not a problem okay so basically okay mishnah brura says basically you can keep the tzitzis and separating the talus okay continue However, if each part of the talus, after the talus was divided, does not, does not have by itself enough material with which to wrap oneself in, so it may mean like if, if they try to do it on a small talus, one must remove the, um, all the tzitzit string. Okay, so, so in, in the first case, we were talking about the big talus, and it's enough, uh, even half of it, to, to wrap himself. So, so that part uh, required tzitzis, meaning they had two, maybe, maybe they needed another two, but it was, uh, since he was not uh, wearing that, there is no problem. But once uh, he, they connected two pieces together, he has to tie, to tie new tzitzis on the second part. Okay. But here they say since um, it was not enough material, so one must remove all the tzitzis. Okay. Because there is this... Uh, there is a definition of how much uh, how much talus is supposed to be, like in order to require this. Okay. Okay. Because when the pieces are separated, each side become exempt from obligation to affix scissors to it. Right? As we said, there is minimum requirement. Uh, due to its small size. Now after the two parts were joined together again, and the garment uh, again become large enough for required scissors. If the original tzitzit tassel uh, would uh, have been left on, right? since the talus uh, were already affixed to it, when it becomes garment, there is obligated tzitzit, it is invalid, due to the precept that you shall make it and not that you shall uh, that use what was already made. So basically, so this is concept. So you, you have to tie tzitzit to complete garment. There were two separate parts. Each one, uh, one of them is, did not require. So now uh, they say remove all of the tzitzis. After they put them two parts together, now it became officially garment. So before it was not officially garment, now it's become officially garment, and now it's officially required tzitzis. And uh, so you, you, you're not able to, to leave it, uh, to leave the, the old tzitzis on, uh, on that piece of talus, let's, uh, we're talking about small talus, why? Because it was not enough room, uh, not, not enough uh, uh, size, as explained above. Okay, if the uh, if in the case where the two sides were separated, one of the sides uh, was enough material uh, um, with which to wrap, and uh, and one side no longer no longer had has enough material with which to wrap. Okay, so one, one side was enough material, so maybe it's, I don't know, there is a hole in one side. So, and another one was, uh, did not have enough material. One should remove tzitzit tassels from the part that does not have enough material with which to wrap. So basically, it's uh, like logically we, we can understand. So we remove only from part that, uh, uh, that was, was too small, keep on the part that is uh, large enough to have tzitzit on, on its own, right? Uh, for if the tzitzel were removed from that side, meaning the, for a bigger side, uh, when it is uh, rejoined to another side and become obligated once uh, again in the midst of tzitzes, the already existing tzitzes will be invalid due to the rule of the, so you have to tie them on the original garment when it's ready, when it is uh, actually being garment. So basically, they say it has to be in the right order. And uh, the, the small part did not require tzitzis, so it's not going to work. Okay. So let's do next uh, halacha. It's uh, very technical, Baruch Hashem. Uh, number 16. If the corners of the talus was cut or torn, okay. So now, now we're talking about corners. So we finish with the string, we will go to the corners. So if you check, if you see at our corners that are always like uh, 
like re reinforcement from a like stronger material to, to make it stronger. Okay. Um, and okay. So one more time. If the corner of the talus was cut or torn, such as that it was separated completely from talus, okay. In a corner completely separated from talus, and the piece that was uh, severed measured less than uh, three uh, thumb dresses. So thumb is uh, like this this part, right? The thumb is in a, in a wider part, so a little piece basically, little piece of the corner. So one more time, if the piece uh, that was severed measured less than uh, three thumb dresses. Um, Three thumb breasts commentary. So it says between 2.3 and 2.8 ounce uh, inches. Okay, so a little piece. Some say that uh, this ever piece, even after it was uh, sewn back uh, securely on the talus, is disqualified from ever having scissors threads attached to it. Okay, so they say so this uh, this piece of the corner was. I completely ripped off. So they say if uh, the authorities can say if you saw him back, so it's in, um, it's disqualified to have scissors. Okay. For since that piece was separated, uh, did not measure three hand dresses, hand uh, no no, uh, thumb dresses, by three thumb dresses. So it was a uh, small piece. If no longer has a halakhic status of being a garment. So meaning that there is no more corner in that garment, right? And uh, even if uh, it is uh, uh, reattached to the talus, it is still considered as, uh, as if it's part of the talus. It is proper to be stringent in this opinion. So let's read again. I mean, uh, it's very complicated. So let's see. For since the piece, I'm going to read the sentence again and try to understand. For since that piece we separated, did not measure three hand uh, thumb dresses, so it was uh, like a small piece, right? Uh, did not measure uh, three thumb dresses by three thumb thumb dresses. It is no longer has the halakhic status of being a garment. So this piece, it's too small to be a garment. Okay, this would be this corner that was ripped off, um, and even. And even when it is reattached to the talus, it is still considered as if it is a part of from if it is a part from the talus. So even if they are reattached, so they say they still it's like it's uh, it's still not there. Consider halakhic, still like it's not there. Okay, it is proper to be stringent in uh, to follow this opinion. See commentary. So Mishnah Brurah cites many authorities who hold that there is no problem with affixing a tzitzis into such a corner after it's sewn back. So since it is so small, they say, like, uh, I mean, st stricter opinion, that even the you is sewn back, it's still like it, it's not there. So it's not it's not a garment. So two pieces of garments, you can uh, at attach to each other, there is no problem. But here, okay, but Mishnah Bura says, okay, no problem. If it was ripped off, just sew back and uh, retie the tzitzis. Okay. But if the uh, if the piece that was cut or torn did not separate completely from the talus, uh -huh, so it's still hanging, since uh, it remains somewhat connected, sewing the piece back is effective. So I mean, like in my mind when I was reading, like it's it's very hard to like to rip off the whole corner. Okay, but uh, the sever yes, okay. So you can so they say if it's only sever, uh, severed, so you can connect it back, sewing no problem. Uh, to render its part of the talus, okay, no problem. Therefore, tzitzi strings that are attached to it, after it had been sewn back into the talus, are valid. Okay, so basically it was not completely ripped off, you, you sew it back, okay, still valid. Continue. It is customary to sew a piece of cloth that measure three hand breasts, uh, uh, three by three thumb breasts. Okay, so that's what we, that's why we have all of the like in, re reinforcement corners in auto lacing. Um, into each corner of the talus, because many garments, uh, even new ones, have smaller pieces attached into the corners, 
that are smaller than the minimum of the three, uh, three by three uh, thumb presses. According to the above opinion, if these smaller pieces were attached to the corners, any scissors affixed to them would not be considered to be attached to the garment and would not be and would be invalid. So commentary, let's see, let's understand what they do what they mean. So Mishnah Brora writes that even if the halacha does not follow that even the halacha does not follow this opinion, it is still advisable to sew extra piece of cloth into the corner to avoid the problem altogether. So I'd like uh, to, to reinforce it so you don't have all these issues. Therefore, on a place where the tzitzis will be affixed, they put a piece of cloth that measure three hand breasts by three hand breasts. Okay, well, thumb breasts, thumb breasts, sorry, Matthew 5. And commentary saying this way the tzitzis will always be attached to the piece of cloth of the proper side. Okay, so maybe, okay, that's what it means. Okay, continue, number 17. Some say that uh, if the entire area of the corner of the garment upon which the tzitzis tassel may be hung, that is uh, from the distance of measure of uh, thumb join from the end of the tallest garment. So th thumb join is like uh, from the, the nail till, till the, the, the first join, as we said, right? So thumb join from the end of the garment, so meaning it's less than uh, three, so I will hit, right? Less than three, until the distance of three thumb breasts from the end of the garment, there, um, there should be no stitching, however small, with any thread which, uh, uh, with which it would be possible to make the tzitzit strings for the garment. So they say no stitches, I'm not sure why, commentary, let's see, no, okay, 97. The reason for this prohibition is that uh, we are concerned that the person, after finishing stitching on the corner, will leave the threads hanging from the stitch, uh -huh. which will um, will be then, which he will then decide to use as one of the tzitzit strings. <laughs> this string is not valid for tzitzit. However, because of, uh, so you have to affix, one must affix the tzitzit string on the garment uh, and not use a string that were already attached. So let, let me explain. I mean, uh, wow, it's all these things. So basically, they uh, let, let's say he, he uses a string, uh, like a thread, so to make the stitching, and he would leave like long, like a um, long string, and somehow, I'm not sure why, he would decide to use it on one of the A8 strings, for whatever reason. So to, to avoid that, they, they say no stitches all around. Since the corners uh, here, since the corners here, is that one will use the hanging threads of the tzitzit string, it is not applicable to any thread that cannot be used as a tzitzit for a particular garment, as the kids will proceed to explain. Okay, so basically, so the, 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 the correct tzitzit means that he, he takes separate strings and uh, bend it uh, like bend it over and then tie it and that's it. Not, not to use something that was existed before. For example, it was linen talus garment. Linen, as we said, there is no problem, it's permitted. One may not, uh, not sew the area of the corner with the linen threads, mm -hmm. but only with the silk threads or the, uh, or the like. Okay, no linen threads. Okay, so in a minute, so it would not be mixed uh, we will lean it together, okay? If it was a silk talus garment, one may not sew the area of the corner of this with the silk threads. Uh, one second. Um, if it was a silk talus, okay. If it was silk talus, he may not sew the area of the corner with the silk threads. If it was woolen talus, he may not sew the uh, there with the woolen threads. Okay, because uh, woolen, and then he would leave over and then uh, use it as one of the strings for itself. I mean, for, for us, it's like uh, Mission Impossible. That all of these sets, uh, they're very thick. Nobody, uh, like, sewing with it, uh, 
it is it's that uh, thick. I'm not sure. I mean, in the, in the olden days, that's probably they, they have the thinner cities than we use today. That's my own explanation. Okay, continue. Uh, one should uh, take uh, the stringent approach, not to um, not only when fixing uh, uh, fixing a tier, but also when uh, with regard to the binding that is made around the hole. So around the hole that is like binding, right um, on the corner on on the corner of the on the corner to strengthen it. Okay, the entire above the entire above concern applies only to the stitching with a white thread. However, if the core uh, with, uh, with the color thread, there is no reason to be concerned mm -hmm. that the person would use the tzitzis link since uh, it does not use the uh, same color of the tzitzis. Okay, so meaning, yeah, I mean, he's not going to make this mistake. Okay, wow. Okay, so let's do next, uh, next uh, halvaka, number 18. When a talus and the tzitzis string are in a good condition, one may not remove the tzitzis from the talus without uh, cause, leaving the talus without tzitzis. One more time. When the talus uh, and the tzitzis uh, are in good condition, one may not remove the tzitzis from the talus without cause, leaving talus without tzitzis, and this would consider lack of respect to the talus that is used uh, for a mitzvah. Uh, if one intends to replace them, however, it is permitted. So basically, uh, the talus is good, the tzitzis are good, so maybe he wants uh, to use the tzitzis somewhere else. Maybe he wants, but it's going to be like some kind of disrespect to the existing talus. So it says, if one wishes to remove tzitzis from a talus, so that he can uh, tie the other tzitzis upon this talus, maybe better one, right? That are nicer, okay, they're nicer than the one that uh, uh, are on it now, or because one of the strings of the current tzitzis was severed, and he wants to, to tie a complete string upon the talus, even though the current tzitzis string is still valid, so that basically, maybe it's one severed, but it's still uh, like uh, still valid, maybe it's half severed, so I mean, you can still wear, but he wants to do like uh, to, to tie new strings, which is no problem. This is nevertheless permitted. So even though it was still valid, but he wants new, no problem. This is because it is not taking them off and leave them talus without tzitzis. On the contrary, he is doing it so that he will affix them, even nicer tzitzis, to the talus. But when removing the uh, tzitzis tassel, to replace it, one should be careful not to dispose uh, of the first pair in any unseemly place. Country. For example, he may not throw them directly into the garbage. So basically we try and when, when you have tzitzis that are not good or, or you, you don't need them, so, uh, so we try to, to bury them. Whatever you, you put the, the Torah scrolls, uh, not Torah scrolls, like Torah materials like Pugniza, that's what we do with uh, the tzitzis. That's what I just recently did also. I mean, I have this pair that is not good. Okay. Continue, number 19. Even tzitzis tassels that become invalid and were therefore removed from talus should not be thrown directly into the garbage. All right, so that's, okay, continuation. So not directly into the garbage because that would uh, constitute this uh, degradation of the mitzvah. In the tzitzis themselves. So talus you can put it like in plastic bag and put in a in the garbage. There is no problem. It's like uh, it's only uh, it's only it's only a garment. But uh, but tzitzis you cannot. Okay, continue. There are those who are, are, are punctilious to store such a tzitzis in a safer uh -huh, holy book and uh, make out of them bookmarks for the safer. Meaning they, they, they try to reuse the mitzvah, right? So continue using as a mitzvah. For since, uh, for since the mitzvah was done with these uh, strings one time, it is proper to have another mitzvah done with them as well. So if, if uh, that's what the person wants, he can use it, no problem. 
even a talus garment that becomes worn and no longer uh, wears it for a mitzvah, even though uh, it was not part of the actual mitzvah itself, as were this uh, as were this thing, he should not use it for a deg uh, degrading purpose. So meaning, so if you if you have talus and it become worn and it's like holes or whatever, it's not good. So you cannot just throw it in the garbage or cut it in pieces and wash your car with it. Not good. Okay. Cannot make a rags out of it. <clears throat> for example, the gradient the use would be use it for a wipe of mud from one's feet. Okay. It may be, however, be thrown directly into the garbage. But uh, it says directly into the garbage, but we're trying to like still respect it. Still with a keeper, if you want, uh, if you have like worn out keeper, so don't throw it in the garbage, put it in a plastic bag, like respectful. Okay, so see, if, one second, let me check. Okay, so let's try to finish this. <laughs> uh, see if number 20. See if number 20. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll finish today. It's, it's okay. On Shabbos, when making a nut is prohibited. One cannot ful uh, fulfill the Torah commandment of fig tzitzes to four corner garment. Okay, so on Shabbos, one of the Torah nice melachas, we didn't get to it, of course, but uh, one of them that you cannot make nuts. In addition, so basically you cannot fix tzitzes on Shabbos or even tie this extra knot. In addition to the Torah requirements to fix tzitzes to four, four corner garment, there is a big prohibition against wearing such a garment even when one cannot affix the tzitzes. Okay, so Rabbi say if you have such a garment that requires tzitzes, you cannot, uh, and it's uh, the tzitzes is not there, like from one side or right, or uh, so you cannot wear it. However, there is a specific situation where rabbinic law is waived. Okay, so Mishnah uh, One such a situation described in this year. So there is one exception. Okay, what is it? If one comes to a synagogue, uh, if one comes on Shabbos to synagogue and he discovers that one of the tzitzes um, of his talus was becoming valid, has become as valid, and he become uh, and he cannot find the other talus to borrow, and he is embarrassed to stay in a synagogue at that time and pray without talus while everyone else is wearing one, then the halacha is as follows. So basically, out of embarrassment, right? Um, commentary. The dispensation applies only to Shabbos. On weekdays, it is forbidden to don a talus under similar circumstances. Basically, on on, on weekend, on a weekday, he can fix it. On Shabbos, he cannot fix it, but we don't want to embarrass him also. But that's uh, the leniency. One second, there's it. One more. Um, so, Halacha is as follows. Since today it is not possible for him, to tie another tzitzis into talus due to the Shabbos prohibition tying a knot, so I mean he has no choice. Therefore, because of the great importance of human dignity, he is permitted to wear talus even in an invalid state, since the rabbinic violation is permitted in certain circumstances to preserve his human dignity. So basically, okay, so let, let's read the Hala, uh, commentary and we're going to explain. This rule has a very specific regulations and not to be cons uh, construed uh, as, uh, as following, as allowing violation of rabbinical commandments in every situation that may violate human dignity. If one is wearing this talus in a public domain, uh, for example, in a street, and notices that one of the strings the talus is invalid, he is required to remove the talus immediately. So that's the problem. So he's uh, in a public domain, so he can, so <laughs> basically he has to leave it somewhere, right? That's what it says. But in the shul, we allow him to pray. So the, the, the way I understand, so if he is, uh, find out there is a problem, like there's a talus in the shul, just leave it in the shul, don't, don't touch it. However, he should not recite the blessing on it, since it is not fulfill any mitzvah, but when they come. So if he sees that uh, there is a problem with uh, one of the tzitzis, so, okay, don't recite the blessing. In the shul you can wear it, so it's like uh, uh, out of your um, 
human dignity is very important. So and we're going to learn in the class of our Shabbos laws that uh, in, in many cases uh, our rabbis gave us like some discount, like some leniency. But only so we can, but as we said in the commentary, we can only apply this leniency when they said so. They give us halacha and they say in this and such and such circumstances you can go by this leniency. When does the halach, when does this halach apply? When he did not know before Shabbos <laughs> that his uh, that his talus has become invalid. But if he knew before Shabbos that it has become invalid, he is prohibited from wearing it on Shabbos, even in a synagogue, and even and uh, we do not attend, the, do not extend to him the above permit. Okay, so if he knew before Shabbos, he had to fix it. For he should have uh, fixed it the uh, uh, day before Shabbos. Commentary. According to Mishnah Burra, if they accidentally forgot to fix it on Friday, he may be lenient to wear on Shabbos. So, okay, so Mishnah Burra gives us some leniency. So if I uh, forgot, he was busy, he was sick, he was this, he was that, so he can still wear it only in synagogue, as we said, but not going home. So continue, see if number 21, last one. If one wears garment upon which one is required to fix tzitzis, without tzitzis attached to it, he has violated the positive commandment of the Torah. As Bamidbar 1538 states, they shall make themselves uh, fringes on the corners of their garments. Commentary. This is true during the week uh, when one can uh, tie the tzitzis onto the garment. Okay. So, Basically, so if you have a garment that's four corner garment, you're not allowed to to wear it and uh, without tzitzis. It is necess- um, it is necessary to be vigilant with some garments, uh, with some garments that are made uh, in a manner that they are, have four corners, and that thus uh, included the requirements of the fixed tzitzis in them. Of course, I mean, but. Uh, most of the garments that we wear today do not require, so we, we do this, we wear this specific garment, this talus cotton. Right? If one is not, um, if one is not going to affix tzitzis on them, he must uh, alter them so that they no longer, no longer, uh, no longer a four corner. So meaning cut, cut off one corner, make it round. To do, to do this, it is necessary to cut one corner, exactly, in such a manner that it becomes rounded. Right? Like in, in our shorts, like sometimes we have like rounded corners, right? Uh, rounded. And no longer consider corner. Commentary. However, cutting a corner diagonally <laughs> will create two corners, making the five-corner garment, upon which one is required to affix scissors to four corners, uh, furthest from the middle of the garment. So if if he has like a, cut it like a diagonally, so he created five corners. Still he has to uh, still uh, since there are four minimum corners, so he has to type uh, four corner four tzitzis anyway. However, if one merely folded the corner over the corner and sewn down, it, uh, sewn it uh, sewn it down in a folded uh, folded possession. In such a manner that it appears rounded, it does not help. So basically, he has to cut with scissors. So if it's just uh, like uh, a bandit uh, un- un- under and so like uh, the, this this corner, it's not going to help. For as long as it was cut off, the folded section is still considered part of the. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. For as long it was not cut off, so it is there. It is there, meaning the only bandit over. Right? The folded uh, section is still considered part of the garment. How great is the punishment for one who violates the commandments of tzitzis? But one who scur- scrupulously, scrupulous with uh, regard to the command of tzitzis, may it greet of uh, countenance of divine presence. Wow. That's amazing. All right, so let's stop here. So we finish. It was a little technical, but uh, I usually don't disrespect the halacha. I don't skip. Okay. Even if it does not apply to us, but it does not make, make any difference. All right. So have any questions, comments, please? Uh, no, not, not today. Uh, I, I, was, I was in a bit of a rush. We'll talk more tomorrow.
All right, Mr. Hashem. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.